Hey guys, what's going on? So today we're going to be taking a look at one of the best ways you can make money in the Elder Scrolls Online right now. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at the best place to steal the new Furnishing Plans, Diagrams, Praxises for the new DLC Blackwood. Now if you go to a guild store and you look for one of these little diagrams or Praxises, they're going to be worth a couple of hundred K each. So the cheapest one I've actually seen was like a little V is worth 300 K in purple. So there's quite a lot of money to be made here and the blue ones are even worth about you know 50 to 100k and the green ones are worth like you know 10 to 20k each you know so there's quite a lot of money to be made here and they're quite easy to get and it's really sort of like a, a passive thing you can be doing you really don't have to concentrate too much you sort of walk in and out of a building and loot a couple of chests and a couple of wardrobe things like that it's really easy stuff okay guys so a really important thing here is to have the homemaker green cp slottable before you actually start thieving. So the reason for this is that it gives you a 10% chance to find a second furnishing plan whenever you find one. So say you find one purple furnishing plan, 10% chance to get another one. And that's, you know, a really significant amount of profit there. And it's something you really don't want to miss out on. So make sure you do actually slot this. Okay, so anyway, just to get here, guys, where I am, we are going to come to this little city here in the bottom left. I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm just not going to. So uh, you're gonna see there's a little house here just in the top middle. So we're gonna be stealing from this house. This is the best one, in my opinion. And we're just gonna come here and we're gonna just pick the lock and we're gonna go inside and steal all of their stuff. So generally whenever I come in here, what it is is that I don't sneak because you get caught by one person maximum. You don't have to really kill anyone and you're gonna get about 270 on your bounty but you'll get that back from just the trash you steal from the cupboards and stuff anyway every run so it makes this about 10 times faster you're not sneaking trying to blade away everyone time stuff you're just bombing through looking for the little plans to be stealing so generally you can see here that actually using that passive from earlier the homemaker passive i got two motifs in the same drop there now that is not that common it's only a 10 percent chance but there you can see it is actually worth having because i got two instead of one now, I'm just going to show you guys the route around the house. It's really simple. It's kind of a, a small route, but there's quite a lot of stuff to steal from here. So you just keep doing this little loop around. You keep stealing all the stuff. Generally, what I do is I don't take anything that's sort of white. Um, I generally don't take many green things either. And if there's a person nearby, I tend not to steal anything because that will add to your bounty. So the quickest thing to do is just run around here looking for the actual furnishing motifs. And that's mainly the only thing I take unless I see a couple of blue items and there's no one around. So on the top floor is actually an NPC. Now sometimes they will aggro to you, but they're really easy to kill and you don't actually get a bounty for killing them. So just bring like a staff and a couple of abilities on your bar and just, you know, like smash them up a little bit if they start, you know, trying to kill you. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So whenever you've finished uh, looting all of this stuff up here, you've, you know, stole everything, all the cupboards are empty and you've got all your loot. All you want to do is make your way downstairs back to the door and you exit. Now you have to exit the building for everything to reset. And you also need to log out and back in again. Now by logging out and logging back in again and being outside of the house, it's going to reset everything inside the house. And that's just pretty much a rinse and repeat from there. So you go in, you steal everything, you come out. You log out, you log back in, everything's reset and you're good to go again, just in a little loop. Now, if you do this many, many times, your bounty's going to be reasonably high. Realistically, what I do is if I get a 300k motif, I don't care about the 10k bounty from being there for over an hour. But um, if you guys are worried about it, just make sure you're still on the treasure from the cupboards. And that way, that will really sort of add up and get your bounty to be cleared when you go to the fence. So speaking about the fence, whenever you come out of the building, if you look sort of directly behind it, that is where the entrance to the fence in this area is going to be. So it's really convenient. It's really close by to where you're actually stealing from. So there's a really, really small chance you're going to get seen by a guard on your way over, even with a high bounty. Now something you could do here is if you never want to pay this bounty and just save that money, you could just make like a trash character um, and just use that character and delete it eventually when it has like a 200k bounty. That's really up to you. It's something people do all the time. 
This is just personally my main character just for video purposes and I'm just going to pay a couple of K to get rid of it, you know? Um, that's fine by me, but if you want to save that extra bit of money, you can just delete the character at some point. Or just have a bounty character. So whenever you reach the fence, really important thing is that basically you want to go to the store and you want to make sure you launder anything you want to keep. So if you sell it, you cannot buy it back. And I've done this a couple of times and it's very upsetting. But uh, yeah, so make sure you launder things you want to keep and you can sell stuff like the treasure just for the coins, okay? Okay, so you can see there I got quite a lot of treasure, okay? So basically I got about 4k worth there and that's just from the little bit of thieving so it more than covered my bounty there so that's really not a worry for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run around in the Sham, which is the main trading city on Xbox. I'm just going to show you guys what purple motifs they have for Sealer and how much they're worth. So just from running around here, what I was able to see is that, you know, there's not that many purples really. So if you get one, it's going to be quite rare and people are going to want to buy it. But at the same time, what I can see is like there's really nothing under 300k. So it's 300k plus for a purple from what I can see. And what I'm seeing is only the sort of not so rare ones are on the traders so i can see a lot of the well a lot of the v's but i don't really see much else purple so realistically i think if you got one of the other more rare motifs you could sell it for quite a substantial amount and also just keep in mind that the blue ones are worth probably about 30 to 100k and the green ones are probably worth about 10 to 20k okay So hopefully you guys find that video helpful, hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully this makes you guys a lot of money. If it does, remember to leave a like on the video, remember to subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you next time.